Our last speaker for tonight is the author and artist of the world's foremost, possibly only, stick figure Shakespeare webcomic. It's called Good Tickle Brain. She illustrated her own slides. Let's hear it for Mia Gosling. So Shakespeare wrote approximately 38 plays, and a lot of them are very well known, but some of them are a bit more obscure. So I'm going to tell you what you need to know about each play in order for you to be able to say, oh yeah, that's the one where if the play ever happens to come up in conversation. I used to be a library cataloger, so we're going to go alphabetically starting with All's Well That Ends Well, in which a brilliant girl tricks a douchebag boy into sleeping with her and then marries him. <laughs> Antony and Cleopatra, an Egyptian queen commits suicide by making a snake bite her on the boob. As you like it, a girl dresses up as a boy, but then pretends to be a girl to find out if her boyfriend really likes her. The comedy of errors. Two sets of identical twins are separated at birth and then confuse the heck out of everyone trying to find each other again. Coriolanus, a fascist, tries to invade Rome, but is stopped when his mother yells at him and tells him he's been a very naughty boy. Cymbeline, a princess, a princess is falsely accused of adultery, uh, disguises herself as a boy, meets her long-lost brothers, wakes up next to a headless corpse, and gets punched by her husband. That's a fun one. Hamlet, a Danish prince, talks for four hours about avenging his father's murder before finally getting around to avenging his father's murder. <laughs> Henry IV, part one, a prince is an irresponsible party boy until there's a big battle and he kills a guy in single combat and it's cool. Henry IV, part two, the irresponsible prince in the last play ditches all his party friends and becomes a responsible king. Henry V, the responsible king from the last play, decides to invade France, commits possible war crimes, and becomes a huge hero. Henry VI, part one, the son of the responsible war hero king from the last play, becomes a lousy king and loses all the France to Joan of Arc. Henry VI, part two, the cousin of the lousy king from the last play, decides that he should be king instead, and basically Game of Thrones happens. <laughs> Henry VI, part three, the lousy king from the last two plays is finally murdered, and his cousin becomes king. Henry VIII, this is the one that's boring enough for me to stop and take a breath. Okay, moving on. Julius Caesar. Bunch of guys assassinate Julius Caesar, but this turns out to be a mistake, and they all kill themselves one by one. King John, a terrible king, locks his nephew up in a tower, but the nephew jumps from the tower and dies, and the king is poisoned by a monk. King Lear, an old king, divides his kingdom up between his daughters, goes mad in the middle of a thunderstorm, and then dies. Love's labor's lost. Four guys swear not to fall in love for three years, but then they immediately fall in love with four girls. Typical. Macbeth. Three witches tell Macbeth he's going to become king, so Macbeth murders the king in order to become king, but this is a bad idea, and Macbeth gets killed. Measure for measure. A government official wants to sleep with a nun, so he threatens to execute the nun's brother, but somehow this is considered a comedy. <laughs> merchant of Venice. A Jewish money lender wants to cut a pound of flesh from an anti-Semitic merchant, but a girl dressed as a boy finds a legal loophole and ruins his life. The Merry Wives of Windsor. A dirty old man wants to have an affair with two married women, but they put him in a laundry basket and throw him in the river. Midsummer Night's Dream. Two couples run into a forest and there are fairies, and a love potion makes everybody fall in love with everybody else, and one guy gets the head of a donkey. Much ado about nothing. A guy and a girl talk smack about each other for four acts before finally realizing that they're actually in love. Othello, a black guy, murders his white wife because of a handkerchief. Also racism. <laughs> Pericles, Prince of Tyre. Guy goes to sea, gets a wife, gets a daughter, loses his wife, loses his daughter, and then finds his wife and daughter again. Richard II, an ineffective and melodramatic king, is deposed by his cousin and totally unsurprisingly ends up dead. Richard III, an evil hunchback, murders his entire family in order to become king, but then he loses his horse, gets killed in battle, and ends up buried under a car park. Romeo and Juliet, a boy and a girl from two families who hate each other, fall in love, and then kill themselves because of an ineffective postal service. <laughs> the Taming of a Shrew, a gold-digging guy uses questionable and problematic techniques to tame and marry a headstrong woman. The Tempest, a sorcerer, shipwrecks all his enemies on an island in order to take revenge on them, but ends up forgiving them instead. Timon of Athens, a rich guy loses all his money, becomes incredibly bitter, lives in a hole in the ground eating roots, and then dies. Titus Andronicus, a guy murders the two guys who raped his daughter, bakes them into pies, and then feeds them to their mother. And like, everybody else gets murdered too. <laughs> Troilus and Cressida, a creepy uncle sets his niece up with a guy, and then, like, the Trojan War happens. Twelfth Night, a girl dresses up as her identical twin brother and forces a lot of people to confront their latent bisexuality. 
The two gentlemen of Verona. A guy ditches his girlfriend, kidnaps his best friend's girlfriend, and also there's a dog. <laughs> the two noble kinsmen. Two cousins are in love with the same woman, but then one of them falls off his horse and dies. And the winter's tale. A king becomes insanely jealous. A guy gets eaten by a bear and a statue comes to life. Who says Shakespeare is boring? Thank you very much. Ending on a great note, let's hear it for our speakers tonight. It's a little intimidating getting up here, so I really appreciate everyone taking the plunge and doing it. You all did a fantastic job. I'm really excited about what happened tonight. I uh, just want to say a couple things before we wrap up. Uh, Ignite's presented by A2Geeks, which is a local nonprofit, uh, volunteer driven, that puts on um, some events such as Ignite and also uh, the Mini Maker Fair, or I'm sorry, Ann Arbor uh, Community and Making Expo that happened this year in June. Usually that happens. Um, we also want to thank the Ann Arbor District Library for hosting us. Let's hear it for the library again. If you're looking for the electric guitars, they're on the second floor on the way out. Um, I also want to thank Washington Toastmasters again for their help with the speakers. And I I think the last thing to have to say is that uh, everyone's welcome to join us. We're just going to head over to the Detroit uh, Filling Station, is that right? Which is near Currytown, basically, right? Um, you can like use this some kind of pocket device or whatever. Um, anyways, everyone's welcome. Hopefully you can come, uh, you know, chat to the speakers, ask your questions, and uh, hopefully we'll see you there and at the next Ignite. Thanks for coming out.